Hello everyone, we've talked about WAN 2.1 VASE 14B in the last video. There's something really interesting and updated in ComfyUI. Previously, we talked about using the WAN video wrapper to run WAN 2.1 VASE. The design of it allow us to download the WAN 2.1 models for text to video and the VASE 14B separately. In a recent update of ComfyUI, there's now native node support for running WAN 2.1 VASE natively. Now here's something that's kind of challenging when I saw what they released in the VASE update. As you can see here, they're running one model of the VASE 14B in a single model file. This is available for download in the Comfy UI Hugging Face repo, repackaged repo here. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll find the 1.3 billion and also the 14 billion models. Now, for the 14B, if we want to get really good quality video generation styles and results, we have to use the 14B, of course. A lot of you guys have already tried that. The file sizes are pretty large, as you can see, 34 gigabytes of storage. If you load this single 14B FP16 VASE model, it includes the WAN 2.1 base model repackaged, which means you need a decent amount of VRAM to run this 34 gigabyte single file. You'll need to plug that into your graphics card's VRAM and execute the generation process. But don't worry, there's something that can solve the problem for most people with lower VRAM, and that's the GGUF quantized models. In the GGUF quantization model, They've quantized different sizes of models here. As you can see in this list of GGUF models, you can try the 8-bit quantized, 6-bit, 5-bit, and even 4-bit quantized versions. Of course, if you go lower to 4 bits, there will be a lot of quality loss because it's a trimmed down model. I've tried the GGUF for Q5, and at least this works for most average mediocre graphics cards that can handle the 5-bit quantized models. We're going to try that out today. So first, you're going to click on the file and versions, and then you'll be able to see a list of the GGUF format files here. Choose one that you're able to run on your computer. If you have higher VRAM, of course, you can go for the Q8, 18 gigabytes, and so on. If you have lower VRAM, you can choose a smaller model size. A lot of you guys might have experienced this before using Flux, or other AI models where we use quantized versions of the AI models to run in low VRAM environments. This way I've loaded the workflow that uses the GGUF model here. Also the nodes running for WANVASE are using the native node. As you can see the WANVASE 2 videos, the K sampler VAE decode, and there's a new one called Trim Video Latent. This is used for the VASE node natively in Comfy UI. We haven't used this before for other AI videos, but we need to connect the green dot of the trim latent and connect that with the trim video latent between these two green dots. Then the sample comes from the pink dot here. Connect that with the output of the K sampler, the output latent paint dot connected here. After that, the latent output from this node for the trim video latent will connect with our VAE decode, just like what we usually do, we'll have the generated image frames, and then we'll connect to our video combine to show the final result here. I've even tried the quantized models of VASE, and it's pretty nice. As you can see, the motions of how the guy is walking are smooth. I also have the reference and source videos of the guy walking here, and then I have the outfit from a reference image, like the leather jacket, car key, pants, and everything replicated into the character in the output video including some hair on the face as well. This is the basic setup of running VASE in the native Comfy UI nodes workflow. You can download this in the examples of workflow GUF repo right here. You'll find the examples workflow at the top of the page. It's based on the Comfy UI native nodes example workflow from the Comfy UI blog post. The connections in the middle part, the control videos, and loading the reference videos. All of that is about the same here. The only thing the author changed is the model loader, which enables GGUF quantized models to load into the workflow. That means we'll have a customized GGUF loader here. Also, there's another option called low VRAM for high RAM scenarios. If you have a low VRAM GPU like 16 gigabytes or under, and your model, for example, vase this time, 
is 14B, it's quite hard to run something like that on 16GB VRAM or below. So you're going to allocate some RAM to run this, and of course you'll need some RAM to make this work. If you don't have a decent amount of RAM to run the low VRAM, high RAM solution, then nothing can really help you with that. This way, I'll load the default workflow again to try this out. I haven't run this before because I didn't have the custom node to run it, and we're going to try it out together today. Just drag and drop the JSON files, and you'll see the clip loader, unit loader, torch multiple GPU, and the model patch torch settings. We're missing something in this scenario though. As you can see, there's a red box marked for the multi-GPU loader, which is the one I was just talking about. The low VRAM with high RAM solution. Let's open up the manager, and we can download that here. Once you load that up, you're going to install the missing components or custom nodes in your Comfy UI. In my case, I just got two custom nodes that I need to install. Some people might have different setups. You might have more custom nodes to install depending on your system. So in this case, I have two missing custom nodes that I need to install right now. I'll just click install on each of them and wait until it's all finished. Then it'll prompt you with a restart button. Let's click the restart button and you'll see in the command prompt window that it's going to restart my comfy UI. As you can see, I've got the custom node installed successfully. It imported the GGUF and also the multi GPU here. Everything is connected for the model loader here. So as you can see, we've got the COSVID 14B model and let's turn this on. We're going to find our LoRa that's located in my system. Right here, we've got the COSVID 14B LoRa model loaded. We've got the GGUF clip loader here. Well, I don't use the GGUF quantized models for the text or the clip text model. I'd rather choose to use the normal safe tensor files that I have here. I've also got the FP16 models running for WAN 2.1. Either one works, you can use FP8 as well if you have lower VRAM and less computing power in your setup. Then, back to here, we've got the text prompt. You're going to use your creativity to play around with your text prompts. Remember to add some descriptions about the reference image, like what the style is, what the outfit is, etc. As you can see in the sampling and decoding here, which I explained at the beginning of the video, we've got these new connections that are going to work for this. One thing worth mentioning is that if you're using the COSVID LoRa that we talked about in previous videos, along with the video wrapper node, once we use the COSVID, we have to lower the sampling steps to say starting from 3 to 6 or 8, etc. This way I'll use 6 for the sampling steps. When I turn on the COSVID LoRa, I'll set the CFG to 1. That's how this is designed for COSVID to run in low sampling steps. And this way, it will speed up your video generation several times faster than the usual settings like sampling step 20 or above. Another thing I'd suggest is keeping the width and height the same. Use the same settings for both. For example, we've got the integer set up for the length and also for the height. Let's say we have 800 for the width and 480 for the height and set that here for resizing the frame. This way, we'll have a more unified setting for the whole workflow instead of jumping into this resize and then going back to adjust each of them separately. Just pass one unified setting to control the whole workflow. That's how a workflow should operate in a computing scenario. So yeah, always have these three settings of numbers ready when loading a video. These are very basic fundamental things to configure. Width, height, and the number of frames. Most of the time, we need to configure those as well. Also, the settings for the model loader. If you directly load the GGUL UNet loader, you'll be using the other VRAM for running the model. If you have a smaller or less VRAM size, this way, you can use the model switch here to toggle over to the load VRAM high RAM solution. This time, we've got something better, a fight scene from this video. During this video, we changed the styles to ancient Japanese styles, like Ronin warriors fighting in a castle. For this one, I was using another reference image. I've tried it with different reference images. If you have a reference image with poses that aren't the same as the start frame of your reference video, it will most likely use those patterns and colors from the reference image as styles for the generated video. Here, as you can see, we've got those colorations and clothing patterns as well applied to the generated video. Also, the curtains in the background, 
it's using another opponent from this reference image that has those white sleeves and patterns, turning that into the background of the generated video. This works like the IP adapter, how we can do style transfer and use control net pose. If you have a similar pose as the first image frame in the video, the pose here, for example, I can use this as a reference to generate another image. Or if I have another image here like this one, we've got two opponents in the fight scene. We can try to use this method to have better compositions for exactly which character styles we want. Let's say you want white and black for two characters, or different colors like what we have in this fight scene. We might be able to apply that as well. Sometimes it's not 100% going to replicate the styles and match all the open poses for each character. If you really want 100% replication of the styles and poses, you'll use the first video's first frames, like this one, the open pose. Use that for your image generation, and then generate an image for the reference. That way, you'll get 100% pose accuracy for the character. The one I just tried is using just the style transfer for that. Let's try with another image, for example, like this, or we're going to try with this frame and generate an image that matches this pose exactly. I've modified this workflow for more in-depth customization. I changed those inputs for the reference image and video reference, swapping them to input parameters here. As you can see, I've defined all this, width, height, and number of frames. I'm also using Flux to make an image based on the first control net pose here. So here, we've got an even bigger workflow like this. These two groups using Flux are coming from my previous workflow that I talked about using one 2.1 fun control, where we were using the first frames of the video and making that into another Flux image for the initial frames image back then. In fun control models, it's more reliant on the similarity of pose references in the restyle image. If you need to do something like this example, we need exactly the same pose as the first frames in the reference video. Then we'll use Flux based on the control net and make a very similar positive pose here. For example, we've got two Japanese Ronin Samurai starting in the fight scene. Therefore, we've resized that and passed it back to the suitable size for one 2.1 video generation. Finally, we've come up with the set image for the restyle by Flux. That brings us to the second step here, where we have the restyle image and also the videos for the source videos. We're getting image processing for the control net preprocessor and generating those image frames like this. Then we move on to the sampling and decoding. This is the step where we'll enable this group. We'll process this group with the flux image as the reference and the open pose control net for the WAN vase doing the sampler. Let's try this out. For example, I've input 8 gigabytes of VRAM and I am using this as a scenario. Then we've got the COSVID 14B type of LoRa model, setting the sampler steps to 8 here. I would suggest starting from 8 to 12. That's the ideal range of sampling steps for COSVID LoRa. Once we use that again, we'll set the CFG to 1 for the COSVID LoRa. Then we'll get really fast generation, like in the previous examples I did here. In this example, I was using one vase to generate about two minutes of video. That's the time it took to generate this video here. We're going to try it again with the updated workflow that I've interpreted, incorporating flux and restyling our first image, which is here. Then we'll use this one for our generation this time because the pose is different, more accurate for what we had in the previous example. Comparing it with the previous one, we've got the generated result here. The first frames of this video, which we have here, this is exactly what we have in the reference image as we use flux to generate and then resize. But back to what we need for one vase. The video here is able to have two separate characters with different styles. As you can see, one is like this, wearing a hat, and the other one has a black helmet and face mask. Even when the body switches over to this side of the camera view, it's still able to identify that this guy is the same person we're referencing. It doesn't overlap with the control net pose. Sometimes in the control net pose here, when we have two characters starting from the left and right sides, two people, when they switch positions like here in the middle part of the video, in one fun control, it mixes up those characters' positions, but in vase, 
especially in the 14B model, it's able to keep track of the two characters here and maintain very coherent styles. As you can see, at the end part of the video, this character is still able to remain as we expect, specifically in their position. The processing time for this video was about 4 minutes. Well, almost 4 minutes, 3 minutes, and 59 seconds, generating 81 frames. Here, we've got the allocations of VRAM. I set that to 8GB of VRAM. Here, the CPU got 8GB, and that's a piece of cake for my computer because it's only consuming about 15% and 12% of that. Here's my info on the VRAM. Originally, in the first graphics card, I have 24GB, and then the CPU has 46GB of RAM. So, we've got enough to run this comfortably. For people on Patreon, my subscribers there, I know that lots of people have even higher hardware configurations. This is really beneficial for running COSVID, especially COSVID LoRa with 1.2.1 V8. It cuts out a lot of time for the generation process, and as well as your sampling steps. It reduces a lot. You don't need to use Tcash or any extra stuff hanging around with the model nodes anymore. Just use the LoRa model, go to the model sampling using Shift plus 8 as typical, and directly to the K-sampler, so a lot cleaner. That's how we can use the native node to create animations or AI videos using Wanvase, and we also have Flux, whichever Flux method you prefer, or even SDXL, whatever method you want to use. This is just an example of how I did it. You don't really need to follow this exact way of making the first frames for control net restyling. That's it for this video and I hope you guys got some inspiration on how you can use WAN 2.1 VASE to have this kind of controllable motion for your AI videos instead of gambling with text to video or image to video and hoping for results based on your text prompt. That's how we can have more control using the control net preprocessor. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.